is a senior geospatial architect with the Meteorological Services of Canada and a long-term contributor to FOSPOG. He contributes to numerous projects in the GeoPython ecosystem. Tom is the co-chair of OGC API, Record Standard Working Group, chair of the YMO expert team on metadata and currently serves as the OS Geo board. His co-presenter is Paul Van, sorry, I can't pronounce his name properly, is supposed to be here also. Um, uh, he is an SDI specialist at ISRCR.org and a PSG member at Geo Network and Pi, Pi Geo API. Paul's interests include data recovery, soil SDI and Inspire. I'll let you, the gentleman, continue so that I don't mispronounce any more names. <laughs> Thank you. Um, just wondering if somebody can share up my uh, my screen. Excellent. Great. Can you guys hear me? Hi. Yeah, we can hear you, Tom. Excellent. So uh, I'd like to thank everybody for uh, for attending this talk. And sorry about the uh, um, the issue this morning. We actually have to reschedule this uh, presentation. But um, uh, thank you for 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 chiming in nonetheless. So Paul and I will uh, will take you through a tour of uh, search capabilities in 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 uh, the well known desktop GIS called uh, called QGIS. So we're going to focus on data discovery here, and uh, I will take you through some. Um, uh, whoops, I will take you through some higher level um, thoughts and descriptions of the metadata and search sort of ecosystem. We'll talk about QGIS and, uh, and, and, and MetaSearch and what MetaSearch is in the context of, of QGIS. Um, Paul will talk about, uh, you know, the addition of API records to the, uh, to the plugin. And then there will be uh, um, some word on updates and then uh, uh, we'll do a demo. So first up, uh, geospatial metadata, which which I know you're all very interested in, and it's uh, it's it's the top of everybody's priority. But it is uh, it can be a complex thing. So it's the uh, who, what, where, when, and why of of what you do of your data set, and it helps it uh, you know documenting your data set with those. Uh, you know, with those constructs helps in, again, documentation, preservation, and, uh, and especially um, discovery. So this will allow, you know, having the right metadata in place will allow your, your, your data to be discovered either on you know, open data search portals or mass market search engines or, uh, or what have you. In the, in the geospatial ecosystem, we've been doing metadata for quite a long time, decades, in fact. Uh, so there was something called the Federal Geographic Data Committee Content Standard on Digital Geospatial Metadata that, that was around since the uh, since the 90s at least. We uh, we also then got into uh, the ISO um, uh, Metadata Standard for Geographic Information. So that's ISO 19115. There's also uh, a Dublin Core, which is uh, not specifically geospatial, but it is a uh, you know the 16 core elements of, uh, of metadata that are that are that are used widely. There's also an application profile around DCAT that's called GeoDCAT, um, which is uh, which is which is popular in Europe. Hmm. Alongside of all that, fast forward to the last couple of years, and uh, if any of you have seen the OGC API presentations uh at any point in the last couple of days you'll know that this is a significant effort coming out of the uh, the ogc to update the ogc standards to become more restful and lower barrier mass market friendly and web developer friendly while well, search is definitely a part of that story so in in uh in ogc we're working on the ogc api records standard which is uh the position to be the successor to the OGC catalog service for the web or CSW standard. There's also a lot, very large significant community effort around spatial temporal asset catalog or stack, which also has an API component. So um, here we can see, uh, you know, some of the same um, core elements, titles, abstracts, keywords, spatial extents, temporal extents, um, ways of describing your data sets. Uh, however, we see a big change in the recent standards and in the in the use of JSON as opposed to XML. 
That doesn't mean XML is necessarily going anywhere per se, but um, JSON is, uh, is, 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 uh, is quite efficient, especially for doing things over the web. So we've given a, a brief overview of around, around uh, metadata uh, uh, formats, and, and there's metadata for anything. I mean, we can have metadata for data sets. We can have metadata for you know, monitoring stations or observing stations for observations. Um, I'm giving examples purely from the from the WMO or the, 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 the weather, climate, water community, but certainly there's metadata at all different levels, and there's a number of different standards to describe them. So once we have all of our metadata in place, uh, let's talk a little bit about APIs and search APIs. So there's no shortage of search APIs out there over time. I'm certainly not. I'm certainly missing a few. Um, I was going to add uh, Z3950, but I'll probably be showing my age, so I didn't do that. Um, but here you can see a number of different search API standards, from the catalog service to the web uh, to uh, Open Search. Um, to uh, Open Archives Initiative Protocol for Metadata Harvesting. There was also something called Search by Search and Retrieval by URL, or SRU, which came from the Library of Congress uh, quite some time ago. And in recent times, we see um, the pro proliferation and the development of the OGC API record standard. So if you look at all the URLs, or you can see some commonality around, okay, uh, um, we, we can see uh, query or search terms, Q equals, kind of predicates, we can see B-box uh, type predicates, we can see daytime type predicates, all these um, API standards, which work on, which work off of the metadata standards that we described previously, have their their own uh, their own slaver, flavors or dialects of, of, of how to query, you know, spatial predicates or temporal predicates or, or other, um, or other kind of uh, uh, property value type uh, attribute queries. So there's no shortage of these either. Now we talk about um, MetaSearch. How does MetaSearch feed into you know, uh, the, the, the vast amounts of metadata that we have out there and the vast amounts of APIs that we have out there for search? So um, taking us back a little bit, the QGIS MetaSearch Meta plugin was initially developed by, by NextGIS in, uh, in 2010. And at that point, it was called CSW Client. So um, you're probably aware that QGIS has a very powerful Python plugin capability, and it's very easy for uh, a developer to develop uh, a Python that does uh, a plugin in Python, which does you know, whatever they wish. So this was, uh, you know, feeding a specific use case at the time. And that was developed by, again by NextGIS. So great, great work there. Um, in, in 2013, uh, I started getting involved in it and making a, a lot of updates to, uh, to basically uh, uh, satisfy some CSW use cases, as well as add some other, uh, other types of functionalities around, you know, showing footprints on maps and adding data from a search. So um, that is very important. So it's not only searching the data, but it's also, uh, you know, once you find a specific metadata record, that metadata record may have a link or many links, which would connect you to, let's say a WMS or a, a web feature service or a direct data download. So a lot of work was, uh, was, done, at that, was done at that time, leveraging uh, the work that was done um, uh, previously. And in 2014, it, uh, the, MetaSearch was, the MetaSearch plugin was accepted as a core Q QGIS plugin. So that meant you no longer had to specifically download uh, MetaSearch anymore. It came with uh, QGIS out of the box. And it continues to come with QGIS out of the box. And it is, uh, it is supported and maintained by, by myself and, and the rest of the QGIS development team. And the goal of this plugin is to be able to query any catalog using uh, we initial, the, the initial use case is catalog service for the web or CSW. So that's, that was the initial use case of you know, making CSWs easier to work with from a, from a client perspective. Um, as well as adding, you know, common protocol to the map so that those actionable link workflows that I talked about earlier around finding a metadata record with a WMS or an ArcGIS, a feature server, an image server, or even, you know, directly downloading a GeoTIFF file, that, that was uh, in scope as well, viewing footprints on maps, and so on and so forth. So here, there are 
should be a live demo uh, later on, but here's a snapshot of what it looks like. So, I mean, there's uh, in the in the application itself, there's an icon on the uh, on the toolbar, and you can open up the MetaSearch client, and you can you can uh, connect to a, a given CSW as well as uh, as well as query it, and you can query it with keywords or or, uh, or spatial predicates as well as get uh, results back and be able to you know, review those results and see where those results are on the map, as well as maybe interact with the underlying data that those results may have. So the, the bottom line was to lower the barrier to using uh, uh, standards-based search APIs in, uh, in QGIS. OGC API records is, uh, is uh, the, next, uh, the next sort of approach. Uh, and like I said, the successor to see to the catalog service uh, for the web standard. There is a uh, uh, OGC API record standards working group that uh, that I co-chair and we're working on the new standard, which is based on a lot of the OGC API building blocks. And it's going to offer a unified uh, restful, uh, restful experience as well as uh, open API and JSON, which will really help the uh, the usability and the, the, up, the uptake and the uh, use of data through these uh, really easy APIs. There are already some server implementations. So PyGeo API is one, PyCSW, GeoNetwork, LDProxy. There's also some uh, client uh, implementations that are, that are slowly coming uh, to light as well. So there's been a number of um, efforts in OGC and as well as mm -hmm. the client implementers and the server implementers around the traditional search APIs. And uh, there seems to be a, you know, a, a, a concerted effort in uh, supporting this standard as a result. I'll move it over to Paul at this point. Yes. Um... So, so uh, the, the effort here was to, to try and integrate that, that, that search experience in the QGIS uh, meta search client, which uh, um, uh, which uh, Tom was uh, mostly driving, and I, I supported him here and there. Um, so, um, my motivation was also in the fact that that, uh, for example, for the project like 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 Geo Network. Um, it's really helpful to have a client uh, application out there to to also to test drive your 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 implementation while while you're implementing. So so that's uh, that's why it's really helpful to to have the meta search support uh, QGIS now. So meta search was extended to have. Uh, um, uh, support for OGC API records, and that's quite transparent. You just put the URL to either the CSW or the the uh, OGC API records in the URL box, and and Meta Search will auto detect which uh, protocol uh, it uh, needs to talk to the server. Um, uh, the interesting question that we have is is uh, to the QGIS community is say hey. Guys, uh, this standard is not final yet, but uh, are you willing to to accept this pull request, um, uh, considering that the standard itself uh, will change uh, in the in the, the coming months while 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 uh, it is still developed. However, the draft is currently the draft standard is currently available, so so changes will be minimal. And um, I actually don't know the the status, Tom. It, it, has it been merged or is it still open? But uh, there is a general understanding that that we are going to merge. Uh, uh, this this uh, functionality. Yes, we're uh, close to having it uh, merged. Yeah. So so for the uh, meta search internally use OD OWS lib, which is a Python library to in engage with OGC services. Um, so for from the QGIS meta search side, there was actually not very much to change because we have this abstraction of of, of uh, OWS lib uh, in between. So uh, a lot of the heavy lifting w was done on the side of uh, OWS lib, um, where we also have to thank uh, mainly Tom, I think. <laughs> um, so, um, but in the meta search itself, we kind of abstracted also the, the functionality uh, to support uh, multiple search protocols. So, which means that if at some point we want to add more protocols such as a uh, stack or um, uh, open search. It should be simpler now because uh, the, the the interface is actually abstracted. Um, now and and uh, 
the functionality is, is, it works more or less. So we're going to do a live demo, I think, after what, this slide or the next. But uh, what we're still working on, and this is also, also a point of discussion within the OGC Records group, is how, how are we going to manage this, this service binding? So once you've found a record, how do you know that, that this one is a WMS service and these are the parameters that you have to provide alongside with it? So which projections does it support and which, which of the layers is the one that I'm interested in? Um, uh, in within This was also in Dublin Core kind of a challenge where we uh, imp um, uh, implemented some assumptions or, or conventions that were common in the, uh, in the, in the community, but those were never really standardized. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to engage with the OGC API records group to make this standardized. And it it's, seems to go and happen using a, a kind of a templated uh, uh, approach where you put uh, the template for a full get map URL in, uh, in the metadata and um, um, make the, the things that are uh, replaceable um, as, as a templated values. So, but that, that still needs some work to, to have that implemented first on the metadata itself. And then once it is on the metadata, we can also implement it uh, in uh, the client. Next one, uh, Tom. So demo time. Um, do you have a screen or, or shall I add my screen uh, to the... Yeah, feel free to add your screen, Paul. Yeah, so I, I need a uh, new uh, Kamsin Raju. Can you add my screen to the stream? Ah, thank you. So uh, let me close this for a minute. So uh, the, the QGIS meta search is typically here on the toolbar or uh, it is uh, under the web uh, menu. And then uh, it opens with the services tab. And this is where you find a pre-configured list of a lot of uh, existing portals. Most of them are currently CSW. But if you, um, I uh, had, uh, I already added PyGA API there. PyGA API is a uh, Python server implementation that implements OGC API records. And uh, in this case, it is the demo server, demo.pygapi.io. Um, and uh, so I just put the URL here of the of the server, and I go to the search uh, window, and I make a search, for example, on WMS. Um, it gives me a search result. So so this uh, meta search itself detects, hey, that's an OGC API record service, and uh, actually can uh, have to zoom a bit here. Let me close this first because we, these search results are mainly in Europe. So you see the red box here that represents uh, the, the one that I highlight. You can also double click one and I get some details about the metadata of that uh, uh, data set. And then yeah, so so that's where we are right now. Um, all of these have actually WMS links, but uh, the, the add data, which would usually open, say, okay, now add this WMS to the map, is currently still activated, and that relates to that, that linkage uh, that we're still implementing. But uh, I guess, uh, I hope we can implement that prior to the, the merge of the PR, else there will be a new uh, PR. So maybe it's good to mention that uh, we're also upgrading the OWS lib to have OGC API record support. So it means that it will be in a major uh, QGIS release. So um, I don't know if that's 3.22 or uh, 3.24. Uh, maybe, do you know uh, that, uh, Tom? Uh, not off the top of my head, it might be 3.22. Yeah, probably. So, but you could, uh, you can still, uh, yeah. For for the dire, for the for the really anxious people, you can already download the source code from from the branch and uh, and deploy it, uh, the plugin. But then make sure that you also upgrade your OWS lib to the latest version. More things to demo, uh, Tom. Um, maybe it'd be valuable to show in the services tab to uh, to show the difference of. Uh, registering a CSW or registering an, OP, uh, an OGC API record endpoint. 
Like if we click uh, new new service or edit uh, or edit service, we can see where it is that you specify. Um, okay, maybe you're working off of a, a different uh, version, but there's a uh, there's an update there when you add a new a new catalog service, it will ask you what type of catalog service it is, and uh, the user would be able to specify either OGC CSW two zero two or 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 OGC API records for that matter. Okay. Uh I thought that was in an evolution where this was not needed anymore. <laughs> <laughs> there, just in case. So it doesn't auto detect. You really need to specify. We could add auto detection. That's a good point. Oh. But uh, I, I, yeah, I thought I you did that because I didn't see the the thing anymore. <laughs> yeah, I know. Not that I, not that I know of. I mean, unless you're well, maybe, you, 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 maybe you somebody maybe. else. Yeah, for sure. But uh, it's an idea. We can we can implement that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For sure. Any, any, maybe from the crowd, are there suggestions what we should uh, demo? Jeroen, uh, you have an idea? What do you want to see? <laughs> are there any, uh, are there any examples of uh, maybe showing adding an actual data set? Have, do we have that working? No, no, that, that's the, the service binding. Eh? That, that's still a work in progress. Uh, that's a work in progress, yeah. Yeah, yeah. for sure. But uh, yeah, we certainly should, uh, should add that. Yeah. And that, that is uh, a long, like as Paul mentioned previously, that's a, that's a long standing issue of, of link types, if you will. So in, in the OGC API records uh, uh, standards working group, we are working on uh, providing guidance to implementers on uh, what kind of link types they could use. I mean, there's the OGC naming authority, and then there's a registry, the OGC, uh, uh, there's a service registry or a definition service, sorry, that provides, you know, the actual uh, the actual codes that you would use for saying this is a WMS or this is a, a, a WFS or what have you. In, uh, in OSGO itself, we have an ad hoc uh, uh, group called uh, Catalog Interoperability, um, or CAD Interop for short. Uh, we've seen, we, and we, which we've come up with uh, our own sort of link uh, link types, and it's a very simple CSV. It's on uh, it's on GitHub, where uh, where people are able to add are you know welcome to add their own link types. We support that uh, primarily. We support that link type list in uh, in QGIS MetaSearch. So if you're creating metadata and you want to know uh, if you're adding a WMS link for your metadata or some other type of actionable link for your metadata, you might want to check out the OSGO uh, uh, code list table that we have on uh, GitHub. I will paste it uh, into the chat if somebody can share it. But um, that that's one option. And then the 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 OGC API record standard is going to have a guidance section of uh, of a number of different vocabularies you can point to and use when you come up with these link types. And that's really, I would say, uh, you know, the holy grail of of doing the search in this context. Here, we want to search for resources, discover them, and then add the data that they refer to right in the map on on the fly. So the search is not just, you know, it's it, it's valuable to discover the existence of data. Um, and it's uh, hugely valuable to be able to integrate that data right on the uh, right on the fly. Yeah. So there was a question if uh, if it works against NGR, which is uh, um, from Jeroen. Uh, NGR is a popular catalog here in the Netherlands. Um, uh, no, unfortunately, well, it, it works against NGR using the CSW interface, of course, but that, that that's no other than than uh, it used to be prior before these uh, developments. But uh, the NGR application has not adopted the the OGC API records uh, yet, so so we cannot uh, try that. I, I know they, they run a geo network instance, and uh, within the geo network community, there is an implementation of OGC API records, but it's it's not fully complete yet. Um, so uh, um, uh, the meta search client fails at some point in the workflow. So so that needs a bit of love uh, there. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, I just tested it against the uh, NGR, and it seems it seems to work using the CSW protocol. So, yeah, CSW, yeah, that works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so for me, uh, Meta Search is really really uh, very interesting tool. The, I, I see a lot of people struggling with a huge uh, table of contents in their in their QGIS projects, and uh, just to have all the data quickly available, but uh, they could do with a very small table of contents and the search option. And then and their meta search is just really, uh, really valuable. So uh, I, uh, I hope, uh, um, I think it should, should be more popular. <laughs> yeah, I posted a link to the, uh, to the uh, code list table that, uh, that we manage sort of in an ad hoc fashion in OSGO. But as, as I said before, there'll be another one from when the OGC API records uh, uh, comes about. And the somewhat related, for those who are interested in creating metadata, there's a uh, there's a presentation tomorrow on PyGeoMeta, which is a Python tool to generate um, generate very simple metadata. So if anybody's interested in in finding out about that side of the metadata life lifecycle, you're welcome to uh, join that. Um, but uh, having good having good metadata is uh, very important for search, which is something that um, I think I, I've learned throughout my uh, throughout my adventures with metadata is that it's 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 work to put up a server and it's work to create these metadata documents and having all the syntax uh, correct, but it's also a lot of work to make sure that those metadata are are properly are properly curated and their quality assessed. Um, so, you know, having a title where the title is a single acronym and the user doesn't know what it is, it, 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 it's, not re it's not very valuable. So I would stress the value of, uh, of placing uh, care and quality into, into your metadata because the better, the more care you put in, the, uh, the better it will be on the other side for uh, discovery, search, and, and, you know, preserving the documentation around, uh, around the data assets. So no... Uh, the best catalog in the world will not help your your really bad metadata. Yeah, there is a question on the list related to a layer from GeoNode, um, um, that which does not uh, load, uh, or actually it it loads the what I understand it loads the WMS capabilities file and not the layer itself directly. Yeah, that that's a known issue, and it, it relates actually to the standard itself because. Um, uh, the, especially in the CSW, it was not, uh, it, it has not been standardized where uh, to put in the metadata which layer you're interested in from the WMS service. So this will improve in the OGC API records because we're going to put the layer parameter as part of the uh, URL definition of the of the server. So, so I hope indeed that we can skip this step uh, in the next iteration. I think that will be a massive improvement given the uh, given the improvement through the OGC API record spec itself. You're right, Paul. So we will essentially, by doing that, we will uh, eliminate an extra step in uh, in adding, you know, in interacting directly with uh, with a metadata record and the data that is part of it. Yeah, and then there is a question uh, where the MetaSearch plugin is found. Um, it should be there on the toolbar by default. It's a, it's a globe with a, a set of glasses binoculars on top of it. If uh, if my screen can be shared again, then I can show the button. Okay, well, you, you, you're probably gonna find it else you will find it under the web menu. Mm -hmm. And there's also a uh, under the web menu or in the uh, the widget itself, there's a uh, there's a help tab and a help button that takes you to the uh, to all the help documentation on the QGIS website. So um, it's meant to provide support and guidance. And uh, and uh, if anybody has any you know comments or, or questions that they would like to see any of the documentation improved, that's certainly a uh, that's certainly welcome as well. So here's uh, the button to open. And the the plug, uh, yeah. So the documentation opens a, a website. 
currently StreamYard. Don't know what's going on. Go, let me go here. So here's a button. I think we have to, to close. Thanks all for your attention and uh, see you around in any of the platforms. <laughs> Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Enjoy. Enjoy. Thank you for your presentation. Um, that was our last presentation for the slot in this room. Thank you for attending. If you have any questions you'd like to forward us, please send them to me on Venueless and I'll forward it to the uh, forward it to the presenters and they can get back to you. Enjoy the rest of your conference. Thank you.